What's up guys, I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That, and today I wanna to show you how to make a modern outdoor table. It's got some crazy welded base legs. I had John Malecki help me out on that, and I also had Mike Montgomery help me out on the top. It was a really cool design. Stay tuned, I'll show you exactly how I did it. They say when in Rome, do as the Romans. And since John and I were visiting Mike from Modern Builds and Ben from Homemade Modern, I figured I had to build something ultra sleek and modern. I started the layout by transferring the measurements of the leg design to a piece of sheet metal that we used as a welding table. I'm using 3 quarter inch bar stock for the legs and I used a stick of it to get the thickness of the pieces and find my angles. With the layout done, I cut one of the legs to length from a piece of bar stock using a cold saw. It has a 15 degree bevel on the top and the bottom for the splay and I used that piece to mark and cut the other outside leg as well. I cut a small piece for the top and I marked it and cut it to size using the layout that I had drawn on the metal sheet. And before welding, I prepped the pieces where they would join together by grinding bevels on the ends. I used some setup magnets to hold things in place and attack weld the pieces together. I use a MIG welder with shielding gas in my shop, but out here at Maker Ranch, they had a different setup. It's the Lincoln Electric Weld Pack 140, and it has the settings for different material and wire size on the inside of the box. Now since we were welding bar stock, we basically used the hottest setting recommended for the wire size of .035 that we were using. I'll have a link to the Weld Pack 140 and you can check it out below. It's a great entry level machine and it runs off 110 volts. Now, I started tacking the parts together and I quickly realized that welding bar stock is very different than the tube steel which I've been working on my other two welding projects. I had to spend more time to really let the weld puddle form and penetrate the bar. After welding up the small assembly, I ground the welds flat on one side and then brought in another bar for the full length crossbar using my layout lines. Now the top is a tame angle, but that bottom angle is really severe. I cut the easier of the two angles first on the cold saw, then John jumped in and gave me a hand cutting the harsh bottom angle with an angle grinder, and we made two of these crossbars. I clamped the first crossbar down and then I tacked it in place and ran full weld beads across each joint. Now the second crossbar is a little tricky since it needs to be cut in half. I raised up the assembly and I positioned the bar underneath and marked it for the cuts. Both angles are the same, so I set it up on the cold saw and I quickly made the cuts. The fit was decent and I tacked the pieces in place, then ran full welds on both sides. I did have a little mismatch at the miter on the bottom, but the nice thing about metal is I could just fill the gap in with that filler metal and grind everything clean afterwards. Oh, and after using the four and a half inch grinder, I changed over to the seven inch grinder and that thing is a beast. If you weld sloppy like me, then do yourself a favor and get a big grinder. It works twice as fast and really hogs off the metal. I cut some two and a half inch flat bar to size to weld to the top of each leg for attaching the table. Then I laid out holes along the flat bar to attach each of the boards I'll be using as the top. I also wanted an outward splay on the legs to give it some added dimension. I tacked the leg to the flat bar, then I filled in the gap in several places with a full bead for a strong joint. To match the angle of the second leg with the one that we just welded up, we just stacked them against each other and eyeballed the angle while I tacked them into place. Then I went to work welding the legs together while the guys talked about their own projects that they made while we were out there. And make sure you check out the links below in the description to Mike's sweet white epoxy cookie table and John's slab flattening sled. With the legs welded up, I needed to connect them with the long stretchers. We set the legs in place and screwed them down to some 2x4s to hold them upright. Then Mike and I laid out a bar for the first stretcher and we marked the angles for the cuts. I cut the bar to length on the cold saw and then I tacked and welded the stretcher in place. Now this is only my third welding project. If you're unsure about getting into welding, I say just go for it. It's gonna work. I don't know if that's the best weld ever, but probably not, but it's gonna work, man. That's right, it's gonna work. We laid in the second stretcher and marked the angles to cut the pieces in half. The angles on this are even harsher than the leg cuts were, so cutting them with the grinder and a cutoff wheel is what worked best. We took the parts back to the base, and I used a mic clamp to hold one end while I tacked the other in place. I found it easier to tack on the tight-fitting small joints here first, just like the legs. Then I went back and tacked and welded the long miter joint that is inherently going to be a little sloppier on the next one. I buttoned it up by welding all the joints, but I didn't do any of the welding on the inside of the long stretchers where they met, mainly because I really just couldn't get in there, but even if I did, I wouldn't be able to grind it down and make it look good. I did grind everything else flat though, and the base was shaping up nicely. 
For the top, I used some tropical hardwood decking boards that Ben had left over from another project. I cut the boards to length on the miter saw using three different species called garapa, kumaru, and tigerwood. These are really dense hardwoods and they're great for outdoor projects and kind of hard to say. The boards were almost six inches wide and I wanted the strips to be a little bit thinner and lighter to match the base. So I ripped them down on the table saw to two and a half inches wide each. And working out there in the Joshua Tree Desert is hot and windy, but man, the scenery is nice. After the boards were ripped to length, I put a chamfer around the top edges of all the boards using a 45 degree chamfer bit in the cordless router. The boards still seemed a little thick at this point at almost a full inch. So I took them over to the planer and knocked them down to three quarters of an inch thick to match the legs. And while Mike and I were running the boards through the planer, John welded up some steel for me. We decided to wrap the top with a three quarter inch angle iron frame. And John cut the miters on the cold saw and then welded them up alternating corners to keep the frame from warping. He also added a flat bar cross member to hold the boards in place once we put the top in. Hey Mike, come here. With the boards plain to size, I called over Mike for his design eye. These boards had a ton of contrast, so if they weren't laid out right, it could look a little crazy. Yeah! Dude, I like that. Good. Easy. Love it. Easy! I applied a penetrating oil to all the boards, and it really gave them some awesome color. Then I moved on to finishing the base. Now here I just used some self-etching primer, and I followed up with a few coats of matte black paint. To assemble the top, we laid the metal frame on some sawhorses and then put one board in at a time and pre-drilled and screwed it into the center flat bar. I worked my way across the table from underneath until all the boards were in. Now one thing I missed on the design here is I should have had two cross members on either end offset by about six inches. Now since I didn't do this, I had to drill into the angle iron frame to attach the boards to the end. It wasn't a huge deal, but the panhead screws are just a little more visible on the edge this way. I attached the boards with 5 8 of an inch screws and used a putty knife to establish a small gap between each board for water drainage when it's outside. After that, we flipped the top back over and put it onto the base. And I attached the top to each leg through the holes that I drilled earlier to finish it off. The angles on this table are just awesome. I love how it takes on different shapes when it's viewed from the front, at an angle, and then from the ends. And that metal frame with a chamfered hardwood top adds some great warmth to it. It's a super modern table because hey, when in Rome. Hey, if you love this video, I think you're gonna love that one too. Go check it out, I got another one queued up there for you. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time guys, get out there and build something awesome.